He is noting cash spending, which is the amount of money in the three-year span that they actually paid out. So that includes salaries, bonus money that on the cap may actually be extended over future years. It was paid out. Actual paychecks. Okay, actual paychecks. Did he mention how he continues to hire people that are currently being paid by other teams because they want to be thrifty? when hiring other coaches to the detriment and development of their players while he also receives the highest paycheck in the NFL himself? Well, I'm glad glad you brought that up because people like to say, well, it doesn't matter what you pay your coach because he's not on the cap. That is accurate, but it is cash. That does fall under the umbrella if you're Robert Kraft of cash spending. So if you're paying him $20, $25, $30 million a year, Mm -hmm. that's added to your 27th in the NFL cash spending. If you add, let's just use Curran's number. He threw 30 out there. It was an mm-hmm. estimate. Yeah, no, no, I know, but let's yeah. just use it. It's fun. Pretty, yeah, fun. no, I'm just making estimate. sure it's So three thirties is a 90. If you add 90 million to the 27th in cash spending the last three years, you think they move up the list a little? I think so, yeah. A lot, because you know what? by far the highest paid yeah. coach in professional sports. We're not talking about just the NFL. Mm, yeah, so maybe, that's interesting, maybe. Bill. You want to focus right. on cash spending, I want to focus on how much cash I'm spending on you to make the worst decision in the history of this franchise when you made Matt Patricia the offensive coordinator. And maybe if Cam Accord was actually coaching for more than gift certificates to Splitsville and Bar Louie, maybe he would have done a better job. He's like a ref. You really should make Cam Accord a full-time coach. (laughs) He would get better production for you. Uh, but honestly, would it surprise you if all those salaries were like some of the lowest in the league because Bill's getting most of the money and he's he's sopping it up himself? No. Hence why he does 10 different jobs? Hence why... Cash is not something I think he should be talking about. I think he should focus on cap. All right, let's go to the phones real quick. Here's Joe and Melrose wanting to talk about that spending. Joe, you're on. Yeah, hi, guys. How are you doing? Um, Yeah, no, what I think is if Belichick might – this might be his last year. What I think is, like, um, when Kraft gave Belichick, like, $200 million to spend, like, uh, after the Cam Newton year – and Kraft's going to go to Belichick. Well, what do you do with all this money? And because the Patriots have a lot of cap space this off season, because Belichick's going to go to Kraft and say, "I need to spend more in free agents, spend more money." And the thing is, it's like you don't give somebody like a hundred million, two hundred million to spend if they're on the hot seat. Because one of the things I think uh, Bill Belichick wants to do, he'd want, probably want to bring in Jimmy G and replace Mac Jones. But Jimmy G is going to cost a lot of money, and Mac Jones is still on his rookie contract. And, you know, Bell, you know, Kraft's probably not going to want to spend the money to do that. All right. Thanks, Joe. Jimmy G getting added to the roster. What do you guys make of that idea? Don't rule it out. I do not rule any significant change, both in terms of personnel and coaching out this offseason. Things have gotten so weird in the last 48 hours from Belichick's incidental shot across the bow of the USS RKK to the email that Robert Kraft sent out. Uh, no, I do not rule any changes out from quarterback who got no ringing endorsement from his coach. I understand. I just got blacked out. On the <laughs> Wait, what feed. happened? Apparently that's, the Patriots have actually gotten eerie. in touch. There with you go. You're back. Feed. You're back. <laughs> Black him out quick. He's revealing too many state secrets. Uh, I don't rule any of that out. No, I, I, I wouldn't be as surprised if Bill Belichick wasn't coaching next year as I wouldn't be if Mac Jones were playing for the Raiders or the Indianapolis Colts. I'm not ruling any of it out. I think there's going to be huge change, not big, huge changes coming to Foxborough. Well, we know Mac is capable of playing quarterback in the National Football League. He has the ability. Oh, sorry, the ability. He has the ability. And, of course, the Raiders are a team that just happens to be in the National Football League. So that would be a good fit with him and Josh McDaniels. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of current Patriots whose jerseys may or may not have sold too many copies in the Patriots Pro Shop this year playing in Las Vegas. Good news is Patriots will actually get to see him again. Pa- Pats fans will see him next year just being in a Raiders uniform. Is that good news? If he's no. beating you? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> nope. You it's referenced, not. Uh, Fitzy, you referenced the letter that was sent out to team ticket holders that we talked about yesterday. That was the email that you were just referencing, correct? Yes, that was the one that sort of got passed all around yesterday where Robert Kraft uh, addressed the STMs, uh, the season ticket members, telling them how he found it unacceptable the way that the season finished up. Big changes would be coming, thanking them for their generous support over the years. Look, I get a chance to, uh, you know, we knock it around a little bit on the podcast and beyond, but I make a point of arriving, Mego, every every game day in Foxborough, hours before the game kicks off, just to walk around the lots and, like, talk to the season ticket holders, see what's on their mind, how they're feeling, 
Then when I do the talk show in the stadium, it's with all season ticket members before I go do the Jumbotron, you know, song and dance routine. And I'd say, honestly, too, like the majority of them were really, really unhappy this season. Like, like re- this is why I call it a lost season. This is a waste of a season because they all feel like it was just completely whizzed away. Like it was totally squandered. And their faith in Bill for somebody that they all have temples and shrines to and that they who they worshipped as much as they did Tom Brady for all those years is starting to erode significant not just a little bit where it's like I'm not so sure about Bill these days you know he is our guy so we'll give him another couple years like no they're really really mad they're super disappointed there is a portion of the fan base that's more than ready to move on now I don't know based on calls and Twitter interaction if that's 1%, 3%, 8%. 1%, 3%, 8%. No, go I, higher, I Andy. Know. It's not a kid's... If we're looking at it as... Like if, uh, everyone always does, like, let's play blame pie. Put it this way. It's not a kid-sized slice of pizza at a Chuck E. Cheese or at a Papa Gino's. Like, it's an actual grown-up adult-sized slice of pizza that would go in terms of... Like, the fan That's base would be like... If you say, like, it's Mayo coaching or McDaniels came back or, like, they, they overpaid for Sean Payton, there's a sizable portion of the fan base right now that would say, like, thanks, Bill, but I'm good. I can't believe that. It's true. Well, I can believe it. I mean, we've been spoiled. It, the bar has been raised in Boston by Belichick, by Brady, and Robert Kraft leads the way. I think that we can't overlook the fact that for a certain portion, the critical portion of the fan base, they were empowered by the owner. If the owner is going to say, I'm pissed we haven't won a playoff game in four years. I'm pissed we're not a contender every year. I expect us to be a contender every year. Doesn't that give you as a right, the, the the patriarch of the organization, the former you, the guy who used to sit on the metal benches at Foxborough Stadium, mm-hmm. who writes the checks, not as many checks as Bill would maybe like to write, who knows, we can get into that, but if he tells you he's mad, doesn't that give you reason to be mad? Doesn't that sort of validate your, your emotion? Absolutely, and that's why when we talk about the friendly fire and trying to frame it that way between Kraft and Belichick, I'm not sure how friendly it is because Kraft started off that statement that he made in front of reporters at the owners meeting in Florida, in front of reporters like Tommy Curran and Phil Perry, who he knows are going to go back and base a television show around that several television shows. He started that out saying, I'm a Patriots fan before anything else. He's putting Mm -hmm. himself in your shoes saying, just like you, this isn't just a business to me. I want to see this team win. And win playoff games. And so I do, I do think that it gives fans the right to feel like they can turn and say, this is not meeting my expectations. It However, is, but, even if yeah. those expectations are incredibly lofty compared to any other sports franchise. No, and that's totally okay. Apologize for stepping on your toes there. But, Mago, think about this. Like, Robert Kraft looks out, and I understand a lot of it was the weather and it was a holiday, but it's December 24th. It's Christmas Eve. 45,000 people in a 67,000-seat stadium on Christmas Eve to watch the Patriots no-show for a half against the Bengals. They're spending a couple hundred million dollars building the new end zone sports club, ex super lighthouse and routine next year to have, what, a forfeits filled stadium? You got people selling their tickets on the on the secondhand market for fifty dollars to Patriots games. You're not selling merchandise from the pro shop. Everyone's getting pro shop emails every day with twenty five to sixty five percent off. You're now becoming one of the teams that get mentioned in the second tier and the third tier of columns, either analyzing or lamenting Patriots losses and uh, the NFL on a regular basis. Robert Kraft doesn't need to win the Super Bowl every year, but he wants to be mentioned. He wants to be relevant. He wants to be where he was at the top. And who wouldn't, once you become like addicted to and drunk on all the success they had for two decades? Yeah, and the Sunday night football, getting bumped from Sunday night oh, football oof. is another one oh. of those. Now, I will say, I think the club that they're building at the end of the stadium is also to bring in revenue on non-football days and and as part of the overall business plan. Maybe Only a business, so many times Optimum Cross Insurance are going to rent that out, Andy. But maybe a business plan that is trying to sort of uh, divest itself from simply winning and losing on the football field because maybe a business model that is no longer uh, driven by success on the football field because the success on the football field has been less. As much as I'd love to talk about all the crafts, profit margins and everything and how they're diversifying their portfolio. I think that's a different station. I want to turn to uh, Tommy Curran. As I just mentioned, he was on Gresham Fourier. I'm still getting used to saying that. Gresham Fourier, he was on our midday show, and he was asked about Bill O'Brien 
because Bill O'Brien has been the name that we're hearing the most around here over the last three weeks. Like, he's going to come in and be the savior that picks Mac Jones back up from this regression year that he had. Obviously, I think to the fault of Matt Patricia, first and foremost. But, you know, Mac is the one out on the field. But Mm -hmm. Bill O'Brien's going to come back and set him right. And so has Bill Belichick made that call yet? They asked Tommy Curran that. If no one reports on Bill O'Brien's status as to whether or not he's talked to the Patriots and, and is still saying he hasn't, once we stop saying, hearing that Bill O'Brien hasn't talked to the Patriots, then we can actually maybe think that maybe they reached out. But so far, it still hasn't. hasn't. What, what maybe about Cliff? The- okay, that was for you at the end. Really wanting to talk about Cliff Kingsbury, which we will get to later in the show. Uh-huh. But... The point that that Kern is make, making and that he made on Twitter maybe a little bit more clearly. Yes. No contact with Bill O'Brien. <laughs> Much clearer far. on Twitter. <laughs> no. Do you have the tweet in front of you? Yes. Read that off. As of this is from Tommy Curran at one o four p.m. As of this time, still no contact between the Patriots and Bill O'Brien, which can me can either mean one, getting mm-hmm. to it; two, not interested; three, happy with the status quo; or four. Don't know how to break it to the fellas that it wasn't a good year on offense. Well, what what no, about Cliff? And that's enough for you. We're going to get to Cliff Kingsbury. But, okay, getting to it and and don't know how to break it to the fellas it wasn't a good year on offense, isn't that in the same bucket? Is that one in the same? Uh, no, you could have, you know, you got a whole list of things you need to do over the first day, day and a half, two days. Now, Isn't this the priority? I mean, God. Yes, I was going to say talk, it should be number uh, one. We get on the phone. Get on the phone with him. Your phone works on the freaking airplane. Send him a text and I message. So much about the Red Sox saying that, and I know this is not Patriots talk, but saying that Xander Bogarts was the priority, the number one priority in the offseason. Mm-hmm. This should be truly, not in the Red Sox sense, this this should truly be the number one priority. Get a competent, good offensive coordinator. On the phone right now. You should be calling all of them because you know what's happening out there. You're not the only one in need. No. The carousel is flying right now. Yep. And coaches are flying off and they're looking to jump back on. on Head coaching jobs, uh, assistant jobs are all going to be coming. And but you 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 said you want them to go get an offensive coordinator. mm -hmm. Does that mean it has to be Billy O'Brien? Could they have maybe they've already called somebody they prioritized? Would you be okay with that? If they have a candidate we all talk about Billy O'Brien or bust. We've done it for a full year now, basically. Probably too much so. Yeah. But maybe they have somebody, if they are all in on somebody and have already contacted him, does that make you feel good? Yeah, because there's a no plan. No matter who it is. You know what? No, well, I'll well, say this Well, there was a plan much. with Patricia. No, it, no, it well, wasn't. Is there another Andy, Belichick we haven't found out about yet? Andy, that oh. wasn't a plan. Stop it. So I, I set this up with Bill O'Brien here because this is from a couple of days ago from Tampa Bay Times reporter Rick Stroud, who's very tight in down there, he opined this. If the Bucks move on from offensive coordinator Byron Leftwich after this season, especially if Tom Brady decides to return to Tampa Bay, the coach to keep an eye on is Bill O'Brien. O'Brien is very close friends with Bucks general manager Jason Light from their days of working together in New England. A year ago, then Bucks coach Bruce Arians was pretty confident that Leftwich was going to be hired as head coach by the Jacksonville Jaguars to replace Urban Myers. The Bucks at that point contacted O'Brien, who would have replaced Leftwich, but it all fell apart when the Jags hired Doug Peterson, who won a Super Bowl with the Eagles. Uh, there's no question Bowles has been very supportive of Leftwich, but the diminishing returns speak for themselves. O'Brien has been linked to other job openings, and it's not like Brady and Leftwich are at each other's throats. Still, that doesn't mean there couldn't be a change. And it also wasn't a disaster. Mm. I know people were disappointed in Tampa, their record, and Tom Brady broke the NFL record for attempts and completions, correct? Correct, and okay. threw from, still threw 25 touchdown passes, less than 10 picks. Uh, about 5,000 yards. Yes, I know it's his only losing season on I'd record. I'd kill for that offense. <laughs> I would ki- Are you kidding me? I would. And, and also, they dealt with all their injuries. It was like, you know, it, it wasn't Marshall Newhouse 2019 Patriots offensive line bad, but they, they had a lot of card shuffling in the offensive line deck this year. Injuries at receiver as well. I'm not making excuses for Brady. He didn't exactly have his most spot on season. Oh, I wonder where his mind was this year. Uh, it was kind of all over the place. It was with but attorneys. But if you're if you're Bill O'Brien, Mego, right? Yeah, it was with his exactly. It was with a jujitsu instructor in Costa Rica. Yeah, it was also with people at FTX. You guys went bankrupt. Lose this number. So 
if if you're if you're Brady and you're thinking about either trying to force your way into San Francisco, I doubt they'll be interested. Maybe making it the Las Vegas Braiders, or if you want to see if Miami's available, whatever. And Bill O'Brien's like, no, don't go anywhere. I promise you, I can fix this. Wouldn't you rather stay where you're already located, closer to the kids, as opposed to having to go on yet another free agency tour, which could be full of disappointment for Brady at age 46? Yes, and it's also where I'd want to go if I were Billy O'Brien because he knows Tom Brady. I know it's a short-term thing with Brady because at some point he's going to be old and done, but it's a short-term thing. But it's also, and a lot of people I know Tom brought this up about Kingsbury, Mm -hmm. lifestyle. We, we learned two weeks ago when Blaine Gabbert was out jet skiing on a Thursday afternoon to oh, save a guy's life son of a that blank. playing for the Bucks might be a little bit more relaxed and beneficial to your work-life balance than playing for New England, correct? Coaching yeah, being the same thing? Talk, yeah, he's humble bragging. Hey, he saved someone's life, sure, but he humble brags about being on a jet ski on a Thursday. Right. Meanwhile, the rest it's of us game are de-icing week. our driveway. And, but it's a oh, game it's week. It was a game week, and on Thursday yeah. afternoon, he was jet skiing with his brother. And Andy, can I also highlight this, that if Bill O'Brien does say like, oh, the hell with it, I like life down south, I like the warmer weather, whatever, if he goes to Tampa, A, it's not like Todd Bowles just signed a 10-year deal, not that that even matters that much in the current college or NFL head coaching landscape, what if it's sort of like, okay, I can draft a guy to groom behind Brady, I can put some head coaching shine on myself by working with Brady for a year or two, yeah. he could take over in Tampa as well as he could maybe get a job somewhere else without having to deal with with Belichick hours, Belichick grumpiness, and the New England media. Well, and that's the other side. Andy, as you said, it's not, it might be a short-term product working project working with Brady. Well, it might be a short-term stay for Bill O'Brien wherever he goes because he's not going to be satisfied being offensive coordinator. He wants to be a head coach again. Right. So that lines up nicely. I just wanted to point out this Rick Stroud article just to underline that all of these guys are tied to each other. The NFL world is small. And you could say, oh, well, he has his roots in New England here and, Mm. you know, his kids in college here, whatever. You can find all these different reasons for him to come here. If you go read what these other writers from other franchises who are beat reporters for other insiders for other franchises are writing, they're writing about all the connections that their guys have to that guy. Everybody is connected. And you have an advantage. Now, it doesn't feel like an advantage, but you're done. The Bucs are still playing. They cannot pursue next year's offensive coordinator until they finish out the year in the playoffs with this year's. Mm -hmm. You have that advantage of you could be putting together your new staff right now. They could be to work by the end of the week or the beginning of next week on next season. And the uh, fact that they haven't reached out, I do think from my perspective is alarming because Uh, I I, you think. But again, okay, let me offer up something from the text line. I know Mago sometimes has a... uh, slanted eye towards the text line or the side eye. I'm sorry. Uh, are you going to read the text that just says diarrhea, diarrhea? No, no, no. no. We're <laughs> okay. all point by a texter. I would have earlier, but uh, 207, would the uh, taco following Adam Gase, if he were number one on Bill Belichick's list, would you have any interest in that? Because you said if he prioritized a plan, you don't really care who it is. If he prioritized an actual plan, if the plan was Adam Gase, Mego would say, Let's get to the other side on that because we had to hit a break. Uh, How are you feeling? Bill O'Brien, no phone calls from Bill Belichick, radio silence from Foxborough. Meanwhile, the coaching carousel is flying. Are you feeling anxiety? Do you think it's going to be Matt Patricia again next year? Give us a call, 617-779-7937. We'll be right back. 